Let's do AM News now. now. He dropped out of school in class six, knowing that his qualifications could not earn him any meaningful job. He resorted to menial work, which could at least help him cater for himself. After trying some laborious works, Mr. AJ resorted to selling coconut. Through that trade, he has ensured his children have what he did not get when growing up education. And Odame sat with him to hear his story for today's series of Hope Feature. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's a waste of the bomb. Soft. Soft. Yeah. Kofi AJ has engaged in lots of menial jobs. He's done mason work. He's driven commercial vehicles. But years ago, he settled on the coconut business. I got engaged in coconut business, though it's difficult because the job requires lots of effort. To say it was easy would be an understatement, he says. When I started, I used to carefully arrange the coconut on a tray. Then I hop in town till it finishes. Then the cycle continues until all I purchased runs out. Did Kofi AJ think of quitting along the way, considering how his colleagues who had fully attended and completed at least senior high school were progressing? It got to a point I thought I could do other jobs because it was energy draining. So I stopped and began driving commercial vehicles. That was also not sustainable for me. I then began doing missionary work. That too was not profitable, so I decided to return to selling coconuts as I realized that was more lucrative. Throughout the journey of changing jobs, I realized all that is required is for one to be determined and willing to work. Sometimes calculating how much he earns a day as against that of his colleagues. Not for once did he believe he must rely on someone else for a job. Self-help to him was the best way to go. As for the job, it requires diligence. Just decide how much you intend to save and if you are disciplined, you will be able to save and even invest. Today, he's happily married and all his six children are in school with the eldest in the university. I would say this job has been very beneficial to me because that's all I've been doing and through that, I have married. I have six children now. The youngest is in senior high school and the eldest is in the university. As he manages these other younger men who are trying to achieve their goals in life, Mr. J constantly reminds them that engaging in hand jobs is not a recipe for poverty. I always use myself as an example when I advise them. I tell them to utilize the skills they have and not always rely on others to assist them. For Joy News, I am Hannah Odami. Now, the minority in Parliament have rescheduled their protest to demand the resignation of the Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Ernest Addison, and his two deputies. This follows the decision of an Accra High Court to adjourn its ruling on a preliminary objection filed by their lawyers. The objection is in response to an injunction process filed by the Ghana Police Service, Richard Kwajo Nyakon, who was in court and has details of the proceedings. 
two preliminary objections were raised by lawyers for the minority and the civil society group. Eduji Tamaklo led the charge. He shut down the police motion and called it incompetent. He says that they have not properly invoked the jurisdiction of the courts. After listening to the various arguments by the minority and the Ghana Police Service, the judge called them into his chamber. Mahama Yarga explains what happened after the judge called them. Eduji, the who led our team, raised very serious legal issues. The police have been doing the wrong thing for a very long time. It is only today that ADG drew the attention of the court to the fact that the police have been doing the wrong thing in terms of the mechanisms that they have always tried to use to stop demonstrators from carrying out their demonstrations. And as you saw, arguments were made for and against our position. The judge asked us to see him in camera. When we went in, he said that the legal issues that were raised by uh, our side were very serious legal issues. They've never really been canvassed before in a court before. And we had referred to several authorities. And he, as a judge, feels that he needs to take a more serious look at the arguments that were made in court today. And uh, uh, given the fact that we just raised those legal issues, he needs a little time to give a ruling, a reasoned ruling, a written reasoned ruling on the matter. So he pleaded with us to give him time. We haggled over the time and finally we agreed on Friday. So he says that we should hold on so that on Friday he will give a ruling on the legal issues that we ourselves have raised in court regarding the competence of the police to come via the mechanisms and uh, the route that they have come to court. So does it mean that the protests by the minority and the civil society will not come off as advertised? Mahama Yarga has some answers. So as law-abiding citizens, we don't want to sidestep the, the, the courts because we need them to protect us also one day. So the courts have not stopped us from demonstrating. And the courts have not changed the route of the demonstration. And we have no intention to change the route of the demonstration. Indeed, the, the arguments on the route hasn't even happened yet in court. It is just our pointing out that the police is incompetent in the way that they have come to court. So we are pleading with our supporters and those who have prepared themselves for this match to remain prepared because this match will happen. It will happen on the same route. It is only the date that will change after the court has given a ruling. So on Friday, we will back here in court. We will listen to the ruling of the court on the preliminary matter. We will go into the substantive matter of whether or not the Bank of Ghana premise is a security zone, whether or not you know, the route that we have chosen uh, cannot be used by us, and then whether or not we are the ones causing the coup in this country. All those arguments will be heard on Friday after the ruling on the preliminary matters and a decision taken by the court. And then we will announce the specific date of the demonstration. What they have done is just to postpone their problems. They have just postponed their problems. As for the problem of we demonstrating and demonstrating their inefficiency, incapacity, how they have destroyed the central bank of Ghana and the financial system of the country, we will demonstrate and we will demonstrate on that route that we have announced to the public. We have also been speaking with the minority leader, Kaysel Atoforsen, on the way forward. Demonstration will happen in due course. The court has asked us to wait for one week and we are waiting for the court ruling on the matter on Friday. Uh, our supporters should remain ready and the demonstration will certainly happen with a new date. Simple. Reporting for Joy News, my name is Richard Kwejonyako. Oh, the district chief executive for Amansia South, Clement Topokunjenfi, is asking residents of Dawusaso to actively support government's commitment to improving the quality of education in the area. He emphasized the importance of taking pride in government's own project, particularly educational infrastructure, and safeguarding them for the benefit of the community.
The newly constructed classroom block funded by the Amancia South District Assembly through its common fund replaces a deteriorated makeshift wooden structure. The district chief executive Clement Opoku Jemfi stressed the need for residents to embrace a culture of maintenance to ensure that the government executed projects remain in good condition for an extended period. Maintenance culture is very key and in my speech I admonish them to take this proper as one of their own, as their own property that they have um, built with their own money. They should guard it jealously, they should protect it with the last drop of their blood. If paints begin to peel out, you should ensure that the peeling of paints, you repaint it and make it look very good. You don't wait for the central government to come back and say we, are, we, we have to repaint the whole building. No. Once you take it upon yourself as community folks and begin to do that, then it gives some reassurances that okay if there's another project that we want to earmark for this community we should do that because they are going to protect it for the state and for the larger interest of entire Ghanaians. Okay. The district director of education Stephen Edudako also appealed to the stakeholders within the district to actively support initiatives aimed at advancing the course of quality education. I expect uh, stakeholders especially those who hail from this uh, area to come and support education. We've had some of them supporting, bringing in uh, books, furniture, and what have you. But the district is vast, so we need more of those uh, supports. So I would like to appeal to philanthropists, especially those who hail from this uh, district, to come to our aid and support. They can provide books or furniture or any other learning materials, yes, they will be welcome. Despite challenges faced by various communities in the district, such as the lack of electricity, water, educational facilities, and poor road infrastructure, Mr. Jemfi emphasized that the district assembly remains committed to addressing these issues. Uh, we, um, as part of our strategy, we, we have done our research and we know the cries and the pleas of every community in the district. So we have it on, on paper. When any project comes, we know where to place this project and where not to place that project. That is what we, we do basically. So it, it is tailored, factioned out for a particular community. So every project that we embark on, we know the, the particular community that is in dying need of such a project so that it befits the purpose to which the project is cited. Well, more than 15,000 people in Ghana have benefited from Project Alpha, an initiative of the Professor Elsie Effa Kaufman Foundation, in partnership with Dest Technology Limited. The project seeks to make the study of science practical and fun for pupils and their teachers. Emmanuel Jiven, who was at the first year anniversary of Project Alpha in Accra, and as far as this report. It's time for science class, and these pupils are beaming with excitement excitement about conducting basic experiments and unraveling the mysteries of the natural world. The pupils want to prove that oxygen supports combustion using simple materials such as candles, tubes, play-doh, plastic bottles and jars containing colored water. As the candle goes out, the water rises to fill the bottle where the oxygen used to be. These pupils are beneficiaries of Project Alpha an initiative by Professor Elsie F. Kaufman Foundation in partnership with Dex Technology. The project aims to make science practical and enjoyable for both teachers and pupils. It's been a year already and there's a lot of excitement. First of all, just even getting the set and opening up the set, you should see the faces of these young people. And when they are able to successfully do an experiment, oh my goodness, the joy around all of this. This is what makes it worth doing for me, to see those young people so excited to be uh, participating in science. Over 15,000 pupils from 176 schools have benefited from the program resulting in improved learning outcomes. When the learners get the sets and they are doing the activities at home, some parents are participating. <laughs> so they may not be a direct 
target, but they are also benefiting by understanding better. They ask questions, so what are you doing? They have a better appreciation of what these science uh, concepts are. Head of Product Development at Dex Technology Limited, Charles Ofori Antipim, says that his organization will introduce more products to expand the reach of the program. We currently have about 170 schools um, that are actively implementing their practical science as we want it. And the idea is to expand it to way more schools, both private and government. We've started at the primary four, five and six level, um, but we are actively working on developing the science set for the lower primary and for the junior high school and even senior high school. Acting head of the Youngsters International School believes the introduction of the science kit has significantly improved pupils' knowledge and skills related to STEM subjects. The learners have also improved in the learning of science because it has given them a lot of hope. It's not like learning from the abstract. Now it is something that they can feel, they can touch, and it's like at all times they are in a hurry to do an activity here or there. Also, Head of Public Affairs at the West Africa Examination Council indicates that Project Alpha represents a paradigm shift in the teaching of science at the elementary school level. They actually represent the new uh, norm, if you want, in uh, science education, making learning more practicable, making the candidates, uh, I mean the students, make use of their own environment, make use of technology, and learn about their own environment to enable them, you know, move away from the root learning and adapt a more practical way of learning. And that enables them to uh, appreciate more what they are learning and that also enhances their ability to recall and be able to use that in their examination. The Professor Elsie Ifa Kaufman Foundation calls for more support to enhance the effectiveness and reach of the initiative. Project Alpha aims to demystify science and make the study of the subject practical and enjoyable. Imano Jivenu for Joy Prime. Now, Ghana is said to become the first African country to manufacture its own cholera vaccine. This is a significant step to join the global fight against infectious diseases. Speaking at a technology transfer event at the National Vaccine Institute, Acting Techno Technical Coordination Directorate um, at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Bafwe Wua, revealed that this initiative is a step in the right direction to ensure that Ghana is self-sufficient. There is more in this report by Jacqueline and Sumayabwa. There are fewer African countries with the capacity to produce vaccines, so many African countries are dependent on developed countries. To break this chain of dependency, Ghana has taken a huge step to produce its own vaccines. It will begin with the production of oral cholera vaccines. EU Biologics, based in Korea, is set to transfer the technology of producing the vaccine to Ghana's local partners, DEK Vaccine, in order to increase global vaccine production capacity and reduce disparity in vaccine access for African children. Acting Technical Coordination Directorate at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Bafo Awa, revealed that this initiative is a step in the right direction to ensure that Ghana is self-sufficient. No, see, the principal aim of manufacturing your own vaccine, one, to have, you know, when you import, we have import duties here, all these add to the cost. So when we are doing it locally, one, you, you, you give job to local people. We want to be self-reliant in all the vaccine space. Presidential advisor on health, Dr. Anthony Insia Asari, is excited that the private sector is leading this new development. He said, with time, Ghana will continue to limit the importation of vaccines. They decided, the president said, let's do this thing through the private sector. We said the private sector is the, is the engine of growth. So we are giving all the necessary backing to the private sector to become the, the, the engine for vaccine production. Private sector does things and does it very well because this company like DEK, which is made up of Dan Adams, NS Chemis, and Kina Pharma, are very industrials, very well established pharmaceutical companies, which are footprints in the West Africa sub-region. And that's what we have been doing. So DEK has already cut 
uh, go, the president cut the sword in April for the setting up of the factory, which is ongoing very, very now. They are being supported by EU, they are being supported by GIZ and the German government. And t now, today, the Koreans have come in with an International Vaccine Institute of Korea and also EU biologists to transfer technology. To, they signed an agreement today to give them products for the production of oral cholera vaccines. They've already signed agreement, as I know, with also Serum Institute of India. And I know also that Latin Life Sciences, which is another private company which was commissioned last year by His Excellency the President, they are going into also vaccine production and then anti-snake and anti-rabies vaccines. The first locally produced oral cholera vaccine is expected to be made available after testing. For Joy News, Jacqueline Ansuma Yeboah. And finally, a uh, philanthropic organization, Volta Health Network, has restored the vision of some 56 persons doing a recent medical mission in Adidome and Sogakofe in the central and south Tong district of the region. A team of specialists performed surgeries comprising small incision, cataract surgery, uh, tichium exercise, evisceration and corneal scrapping. There is more in the following report. A team of over four medical experts and volunteers pitched camp at the Adidome and Tugakope government hospitals to render free health services to beneficiaries during the second edition of the Volta Health Network medical mission. The co-president of the Volta Health Network, Dr. Francis Jojo Dameli, said that his outfit offers multi-specialty services during their missions. Most medical missions are one diagnosis medical missions or one specialty medical missions. But ours is multi-specialty. Our services range from internal medicine, family medicine, cardiology, general surgery, urology, ophthalmology, just mention it, recovery. So we provide a broad array of medical services. We attend to a broad array of pathology which is very much needed in our communities, which are largely underserved. Why are we doing this? Not for financial reward, but because we care and we want to give back. We are grateful for the investment the people of Ghana made in our training, in our education, and we think that we should give back to our people. Residents from Adidome, Mafi Kumasi, Drapon, and hard to reach communities benefited from the humanitarian service. They were provided free consultations, diagnosis, treatment, and surgical services. Some beneficiaries who came with eye conditions had their visions restored. <laughs> The <laughs> The medical superintendent of the Adidome Government Hospital, Dela Martin Ahiavi, was grateful for the network for extending their services to his jurisdiction. Togo Chair, ladies and gentlemen, at our half year performance review meeting held last week, it came into light that most of our monitoring intakes are coming from homes. As medical professionals, we have a responsibility to care for the health of our communities we serve. And this outreach program, without any doubt, is aimed at achieving this goal. The member of parliament for Central Town, Gabi Hutoje, and the district assembly supported the mission to 
ensure its success. Some medical consumables were presented to the Didume Government Hospital by the Volta Health Network. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News, Adidume. And here in Accra, I am Samuel Kojo Briss. And that's how we wrap up the AM News. There's more news on myjoyonline.com. Up next is the news review on the show. Stay with us.